Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator. I asked you guys in the last video and I also did a poll on Twitter of which car I should do next between the Ford Focus RS and the NA Miata and the Ford Focus RS won by quite a bit. A lot of people really want to see this car restored and I do as well. So that is what we're going to do today. So as you can tell, by looking at this thing, it is absolutely junked. It's really junked. Let's get in it. I wonder how accurate the interior is. It's actually, it's, wow. It's really accurate. <laughs> it really is accurate. Uh, the temperature gauge is extremely high. If I ever saw my temp gauge that high on the oil temp, I'd pull over and stop. Um, that's pretty, yeah, no, I mean, this is, yeah. This is really, really accurate. Wow. It's absolutely crazy. The interior is just destroyed as well. So, today, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fix this car up. We're going to get her looking pretty. And uh, we're going to have ourselves a little Focus RS. And uh, see if we can uh, take it out on the track and see what kind of power we can put into it. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do in terms of uh, modifications. I don't know if I'm going to put performance parts in this car or if I'm just going to do the standard... Uh, the standard pieces and just not worry about power. I don't really know. Um, I'm still trying to decide. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out once we start building the engine because, I mean, that's the same issue I have with my real Focus RS in real life, which I, I own and I absolutely love. It's an amazing car. Love that thing. But I have the same issue as I go, uh, do I want to modify it or do I want to just keep it stock and not really modify it even though I have already technically modified my RS and I have probably voided some sort of warranty on it that's another thing about it is I really want to modify my car but I don't want to void my warranty which again I think I've already done uh, we need to take some of these pieces off here because it is an all-wheel drive system this system is going to be a little bit different than some of the previous cars that we've done uh, just because, yeah, it is all-wheel drive, but it's an all-wheel drive and it's turboed, too. Because the last, uh, the GTR we did wasn't turboed. So, I believe, just looking at the rear end, yep, it's that really complex rear end system. So, we'll have to deal with that, too. I'm really hoping the exhaust works on this mod, just because the last previous mods that I've done with, uh, with, uh, modded cars, the exhaust is the one thing that kind of just breaks. So... I guess we'll find out. We'll see. Uh, I've also been looking at a bunch of other mods as well that I can keep doing because you guys really enjoy this game, which is awesome because I really enjoy it too. And it's nice to see that uh, those two things sync up. There's sometimes where, you know, I'll have a game that I really enjoyed playing and not many people enjoy watching, which kind of sucks because, you know, you just, you got to kind of, oh shit, I didn't mean to rotate that. Let's go ahead and put that on there. This engine is practically gone. It's literally just a block. So that's great. But yeah, it's really nice when uh, you enjoy a series and everybody enjoys watching it too. Like, that's very, that's very nice. So I do appreciate all the support. And I will continue to do it until we run out of cars to do. But there are so many mods out there that I don't think that's going to happen. So let's go ahead and just start tearing down the engine bay of everything that could be left in here. We'll take the air filter out and the air box and everything. Put the battery on the charger. Go ahead and take the radiator out. Let's do the intercooler, which we can't do from the engine bay. Pretty sure we can do it from here, though. Can we do it from here? Nope. It has to be up on the lift. That's legit, even though it's right there. All right. So let's go ahead and put this thing up on the lift. I'm going to put the battery on the charger, just because we're going to need that eventually. Man, I am really hungry. I was not hungry, and then I started recording. I was like, hmm, damn. I'm really hungry. All right, let's take the intercooler off. Okay, so let's do the rear suspension teardown first. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I am looking at a bunch of mods. There's a lot of new things, or not new, but there's a lot of mods out there. So I'm going to kind of keep looking at some things. I currently, once I finish the RS and I do the Miata, which I am going to do next... Uh, just FYI, because I know there were people that did want to see the Miata, just there was more people that wanted to see the Focus. So, once I do the Miata, I have, I'm out of mods that I've installed. So, I've been looking to try to find some cool stuff. I've seen some things that are pretty awesome. I also think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the, uh, uh, what is it, the um, Pagani DLC. 
I think I'm going to get the Pagani DLC because I think that would be a very interesting car to work on. I'm not really sure how you would come across to... Would it be junked or would you... I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what would happen with that, but that would be a pretty cool thing to work on. So I'm probably going to end up picking that up so we can do that. Also, if I do that, we get access to the high speed track, which if we get access to the high speed track, we can hopefully just take anything on it, which would be pretty damn cool because then we could really like compare like top speeds uh, of some things. Also, I did find another Crown Victoria in the in the junkyard. So I will probably be able to do a uh, Crown Vic... Um, a performance crown vic build at some point uh what what i'm thinking about doing with that is kind of just leaving it uh leaving most of this stuff that i typically do out and just kind of doing the performance bits um so kind of getting the suspension all done off camera and everything and then coming in with the performance stuff to put uh more power into it and then kind of compare the two against each other and hopefully at that point we could i'll, I'll pick up the uh, pagani dlc and we can use the high speed track and kind of see the, the speed differences between the two. I think that would be really cool. So, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy that you guys are enjoying the series. It's it, This is something that I honestly was just doing on my own, just not recording, like just restoring cars in my free time that I had. And I was like, well, I'm going to see if people want to do this and see, see if people like it. I really do wasn't sure what the response was going to be but it's very nice that you guys are enjoying this because yeah this is this is a lot of fun for me i'm a big car guy i don't know everything about everything i don't claim to be i don't claim to be a you know master mechanic or anything like that but like this is a good way to kind of get that itch of wanting to work on something but not tearing apart your own car because there are some times where you tear apart your own car and then you're sitting there and it's all torn apart and you're like why did i do this <laughs> why did i do this uh, yeah, I, I, I've got a couple ongoing projects with my real cars in real life that I would love to be able to finish. Luckily, they're all put together and working, but I just, there's so many things that I'm wanting to do that I just, just don't have the time to do. And also now I am in Florida. So the, you know, I, I used to work on my cars with, uh, Polecat and, uh, you know, a couple other buddies. And it was very nice because you had the extra hand to help. And, you know, I'm near Jeff now and he, He's, he, he doesn't hate working on cars. He's just, he doesn't have the same interest as, you know, Polecat and some other buddies that were in California that, that had the same interest. Uh, so it would pretty much just be me. So if something comes up that doesn't work properly, uh, well, it'd be up to me to be able to fix it <laughs> on my own, uh, which is a little bit scary just because I, like I said, I'm just, I'm not the most mechanically inclined person, but I'm, I think I'm more than the average. So, I don't know. I've got a couple projects I'm trying to do for my uh, Mazda Speed Miata, um, which is uh, a factory turboed Miata, 1.8 liter turbo. Um, I've done quite a bit of upgrades on that car. I just need to... Uh, I have a big brake kit I'm trying to install, which I don't think is going to be too difficult. I just... Oops. Did not want to sit in the car. I just haven't started that project yet. There's only one front seat. Okay, all the other components are missing, so that's fine. All right, so this thing is completely stripped down now. No parts left in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go around and just pull off the body panels that are still there now, which I there's really nothing. A door and a window and a headlight, and that's it, and the trunk lid. That is it. There's literally nothing else on this car to take off so it is absolutely stripped so we're gonna need to be buying some some parts which is totally fine i'm not gonna make it i don't know if this car has any like performance looking parts to it like in terms of like the the gtr that had all the uh, like customization stuff I'm, i haven't really looked that much uh but if it does i'm not gonna do it i'm just gonna go completely stock let's go and use the equipment bam oh there you go. There is a piece right there that we need to take off. Front right fender. Okay. Anything else? Do a quick walk around. Anything else rusty on this car? The green is just not... It's kind of cool. It's... I mean, it's... It's a color. I, I don't prefer it. Let's take a look at the interior real quick. The interior actually looks decent, but you can see around the... 
the gauges is still pretty messed up. So let's do the interior detailing kit on it. Bam. Check that out. It looks so good. I can't sit in the car anymore, but I can tell that it's nice and shiny in there. Oh, man. This is this is going to look good when it's done. I really, I'm a huge fan of the way the, the Focus RS looks. All right, so now that we've done that, we have to repair all the pieces we got off of it. And actually, before we do that, let's just go ahead and pull this thing apart just because I know there's not going to be many components to this, really. Oh, it still has the pistons in it, which is surprising. This one actually has a rod cap on it. Wow. Most times, it's just an engine block. You just don't get anything else. It's just like, that's it. You get the, the, the crankshaft and the block. All right. Okay, so I can go and try to repair those parts. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I might just do performance mods just to kind of see how quick we can get this thing. Because, I mean, why not? Like, that's what I would want to do to mine in real life. So let's do it to this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repair all those pieces. And uh, we'll start working on rebuilding the suspension. We'll get that all sorted out. We'll get the interior sorted out. Then we'll build the motor. And then uh, we'll drop her in. All right, so we got all the parts repaired. I went ahead and did the wheels. I did change them up this time, but again, I'm not going to show you till they're on the car. I got the interior in, new seats. I got a wheel that was somewhat resembling of the RS wheel. Unfortunately, they don't have it. That one's pretty close. It's just not, it's not identical. It's not 100% accurate, which is unfortunate. I wish they had more interior options for these modded cars because they, they kind of don't. Oh, that's a little see-through from the back. That's a little strange. Hmm. No, it's not see-through. It's just, I don't know. Something's weird about that. Anyway, so yeah, I went ahead and repaired all the parts. We're going to start working on the suspension. Let's go ahead and put the block back on the stand, if we have it. I don't know if it actually survived the, uh, it did. Perfect. Oh, perfect. So we do have the block. All right, so let's go ahead and start the suspension because this is a process because this rear suspension, which is also destroyed... So we're going to have to get that as well. Oh, man. We're going to be spending some money on this one because the engine's already pretty much fully gone. And yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be a bit of money to be able to get this thing back up on the road. So, all right, let's see. So we're going to need four rubber bushings. We're going to need a ton of rubber bushings because these this rear end system is just so complex. Uh, rear sway bar B and four rubber bushings. So let's go and buy that. We're going to need two rear shock absorber A's or B's. You know, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. Wait, does this one even have? Yeah, no, it has rear shock absorbers. Yeah, I don't know. All right, not really sure. We're going to buy a fuel tank as well because we're going to need that. Let's get some four rubber bushings because we're definitely going to have to be buying some pieces for this thing because nothing always survives. So let's go ahead and we do have an upgraded fuel pump. Way bar B. Let's put the rubber bushings in. And then we'll start working on the sides here and seeing what we're going to need to purchase and put together. And uh, the front suspension shouldn't be too difficult to do. Uh, the rears, though, these this specific rear setup is just very complex. We're going to need a rear axle housing a, rear axle housing A, you're going to need that, and we're just going to be buying pieces, sway bar, rear end links, we're going to need two of those, totally forgot about that, uh, we're going to need, let's go ahead and see if we can do the rear shock absorber A's, I thought it was A's, I just didn't want to buy them if I didn't need them, um, and let's see, so these are going to be two small rubber bushings, we're also going to need two rear suspension arm B's, so two rear suspension arm B's, uh, we're just going to do a quick little overview just to see two rear suspension arms, wow, we really didn't, we didn't really repair much from this one, <laughs> that's pretty unfortunate, uh, rear suspension arm, we have one which takes a rubber bushing and a small rubber bushing, so three rubber bushings, Three small rubber bushings. Rear suspension upper arm, which is you. And uh, let's see, uh, what else are we going to need? We're going to need one. So, one, two, three, four small rubber bushings. Uh, and then one, 
two, or actually eight small rubber bushings because we need to do the other side as well. And then one, two, hold on, let's, one, and we're going to need two, hmm, okay. All right, getting a little ahead of myself. Sometimes it gets a little confusing, so let's go ahead and just get eight of these because we're going to need that. Uh, we're definitely going to need... We're going to get four for now. I know we're going to need more, but I just... I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. There we go, because then we can do the rear suspension arm A, which we're going to need to buy another one. Of course we are. Rear suspension arm A. We're also going to need two rear springs and two spring caps for the rear. Just trying to button up some of the things that we do have that we can put on right now. We can try to figure out how many more bushings we're going to need for all this. So rear suspension arm B, we have two rubber bushings there. Or two small rubber bushings there. Uh, let's see. Rear upper arm, one big, one small. Um, we're going to need the front cross member or the front rear something. What is this thing called? Front suspension arm. We're going to need to put a rubber bush in there. And spring cap. Oh, we're going to need spring caps. That's unfortunate. I hope I don't need rear springs. Spring caps. We're also, before I go any further, I know we're going to need four of these. I already know it. Okay. Let's see. Rear springs. Good thing I got them. Spring caps. Good thing I got them. Okay. Let's just double check. Make sure there's nothing in here that we're missing. I think we're going to be good, actually. I don't think we're going to really need more pieces. We should be able to do the other side relatively quick. Wheel hub three. Let's just go ahead and get that now. Since we're going to need it. Rear wheel hub. We're going to need another one of those. Man. So let's go ahead and get a rear wheel hub. And then we're also going to get... Let's go to brakes because we're going to need... So we're going to need two of these. And two of the regular brake discs. We're going to need four pads. And we'll see about calipers because uh, typically those calipers do not... Do not survive... The full repair. At least we got both of the rear drive axles. That's nice. Brake pads. So calipers. We're going to need one caliper and one uh, brake caliper cylinder, which that's not too bad. All right. So one of these and one of these. And I believe this side is done. Okay. Not bad. So let's go ahead and see if we've missed anything by doing this side. Because if we did, it's going to be pretty noticeable right away. So we're just going to try to get everything we already got done on the other side done here. And then see if we actually missed anything. Which I don't think we did. I don't think we're going to need to get any more pieces to do this side. Which is actually really nice. Because sometimes you think you got everything and then you go to put the other side on after doing what I just did. Where you purchase the pieces that you think you need along the way. And it turns out that you didn't do it properly. Or you're missing this piece or that piece or something. Okay, so we're out of small rubber bushings, which is perfect. Because I believe those are the last ones we need. Do the rear suspension arm here. Which this is going to require. We're going to have two left over of the big rubber bushings. Actually, no, we're not. Oh, shit, we did it. Okay. Let me just double check before we start working on the wheel hub there. Looks like everything's in order back here. I don't think we're missing anything. Go ahead and do the wheel hub real quick. And then the rear suspension is done, which is really nice because this one is the, the pain to do. The fronts are not bad at all. The rears, always bad. At least for this setup. The all-wheel drive setup is, is very complex and just not, uh, not easy to work on at all. Okay. So that is done. So before we move on to the front, there's going to be some things I know we're going to need. So we're going to need four rubber bushings. I know that. Um, we're going to need the front suspension arm or uh, the uh, front shock absorber A, two of those. We're going to need two springs and we're going to need two front shock absorber caps. Let's go ahead and start working on these. Um, and while that's going, I'm going to buy... Anything else that I can think, we're definitely going to need two tie rods. We're going to need 
two of these. We're going to need to get some uh, end links, which I believe they're A. Two of them. We'll probably need a front sway bar. Um, anything else that I can think of that we're going to need up there? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Trying to think. We got wheel hubs. We got brakes. We got... Um, I think we're all right to start working on the front. I believe we're all right to start working on the front. Oh, hey, we didn't need to buy a front cross member this time. Unlike the last two builds where both of them were broken and we needed to buy both. Hopefully we won't have to buy a... This is a front sway bar suite. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and throw that in place right there. Hopefully we don't need to buy a steering rack, but we'll see. Let's just see right now, actually, if we're going to need a steering rack. We don't. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So, uh, let's just quick overview. Okay, yep. Front steering knuckle A, we got two. Awesome. Um, lower suspension arm, we're going to need two of those, and they're going to need two regular rubber bushings. So, four rubber bushings and lower suspension arm. So, two of these, and we'll go to get four of these. Okay. It's always nice to work on one side and just buy the parts for both if you know that you're going to need it. Because it makes one side go a little slow, but it makes the other side go much, much quicker. We already have these built, which is perfect. We'll put those in place. Put the inner tie rod in. Outer tie rod in. And let's just see. There we go. Sway bar front end link A. It's also nice if you've, do, if you've done this enough times, you just get to the point where you just know what you're going to need, what what things cannot be replaced, uh, like wheel hubs and tie rods and sway bars and stuff like that. Like That way you can just have a ton of them just ready to go. And that's what I should probably do. Is I, I should probably just eventually just buy like a ton of those sway bars and uh, end links and just all that so I don't have to keep going in and buying more every single time. But it's just a lot of money. And I've, since I've been starting doing this series, my money has dwindled quite a bit because I'm not just sitting there uh, restoring cars and selling them. I'm restoring cars and then I'm just keeping them in my garage. So it's like, well, uh, yeah, there goes my money. All the money I, that I've been working on getting while not recording is just going down the toilet. I mean, I'm getting some cool cars out of it, but I'm just not earning any more money like I was. All right. So this side should be relatively easy. We're going to finish this up real quick. And then from there, we'll put the engine bay a little bit together. We'll lower her back down. Uh, we got to get the battery off the charger. We'll put the intercooler in. Uh, we'll get the yeah. We'll we'll start buttoning it up, getting ready for the uh, the tr the engine to go in. And I believe we are done. Done on the fronts. How much easier the front suspension is it compared to the rest? Okay, let's just check real quick to see if we actually can install the intercooler medium intercooler nope we're gonna need to get one okay i don't know if the performance shop actually has intercoolers do they do they no they don't okay so we'll just get a normal intercooler medium intercooler we'll put that in since the car needs to be up on the lift to be able to do it and then let's go ahead and lower her back down and we'll get the battery. We'll get the engine bay sorted and then we'll start working on the engine. Getting that back in. Getting this thing some power. Putting some actual power into this thing. Which is going to be pretty awesome. I'm excited to see how fast this is going to be. And also I'm excited to see what they're going to say the horsepower rating is. Because I've noticed some of them are really off. And some of them aren't. So I guess we'll find out. Brake servo we have, ABS pump we have, don't have an ABS module, yeah, I knew that was coming, because I didn't see it there when we uh, started to tear the car apart, so let's go ahead and throw this back in there, we're going to need the air filter top box, I know that, air filter base, we're going to need the standard air filter and the air filter box, but I'm going to probably buy the performance air filter let's get the air filter cover we're gonna need to get those stupid clips too because this cover is gonna require clips of course it is and air filter this one 
gives us one extra horsepower, just like a real life air filter. <laughs> I actually did the uh, the air filter on my RS, and I don't notice any power increase at all. Like it doesn't. It, there's no difference. It's just a lot more sound. You get a lot more turbo noises coming from that air filter, which is, I mean, I don't hate. I really enjoy. Very nice to listen to, but it does nothing in terms of performance. It looks good under the engine. I got the Mound Tune intake system, and it's it's very nice. Like I, I'm really liking Mound Tune parts. Like that's what I've been going. That's my go-to thing for focus parts is Mound Tune. They make some really really nice stuff. Okay, we need radiator fan housing, and then the radiator fan housing fan. So radiator fan housing, radiator fan housing fan. Put those in. And anything else in the engine bay that needs to be buttoned up before we move on? I don't believe so. I do not believe so. Also, what? Oh, you know why we can't put the front wheels on? We need to get the uh, gearbox in, all-wheel drive, so. That's fine. I was wondering why it was giving me the option to put the wheels on the back, but not the front. So, all right. So, I believe, I believe that's done. The whole suspension is done. Engine bay is done. The only thing we're waiting for is to do the engine. We'll put this in real quick. We'll build this motor. And uh, we'll uh, we'll try to get some power out of this thing. So we're going to need uh, crankshaft bearing caps, three of them. So let's go ahead and do this. So crankshaft bearing caps, three crankshaft bearing caps. We're going to need four rod caps. Uh, we're going to need uh, piston rings. We'll do piston rings. We'll do four piston rings. And then we'll come out here to the performance shop and actually pick up performance pistons. Because that is what we need. Um, I don't believe this thing had an oil pan, so we're probably going to have to pick one of those up. And a filter. I believe it's I4 or I4B. I'm not. Well, we're not going to buy that just yet. We're going to wait to see. I don't want to end up purchasing the wrong parts here. And just having parts that I'm just not going to use laying around and spending the money on. i got to start focusing a little bit more on my money here. I have some cars that I've restored that are just sitting in my garage I could probably sell if I really start getting desperate with money. But as of right now, I'm doing okay. Oop. Shit. There we go. Alright. Pistons are in. Let's do the rod caps real quick. Get these on. And then we'll see what kind of oil pan we're going to need. We can flip this motor the right way around. I think this is the first turboed motor that I've uh, done in the restoration garage before. So it is an I4B. Okay, so I4B. And then I'm assuming this is just going to take a standard uh, I4 filter. It is. Okay, awesome. Standard I4 filter. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and flip it right way. There we go. And let's see what other components we're going to need here. Alternator. I believe I do not have a power alternator. Power steering pump. I do have one of those, but I don't know if they make a performance one. Uh, engine head I4B. We're going to need to buy one. So let's quickly just double check this. So um, power steering pump I4. They do have. Sweet. Alternator. They have. Uh, head, we're going to need the I4B head. Okay. Go ahead and put these on real quick. Let's do the performance alternator. Performance parts look so much better than the standard. Oh, it is an I4B. Oh, no, I just bought a standard I4, didn't I? Yep. That sucks. Well, that's all right. I mean, we have another one now, I guess. Nah. That, that kind of sucks. That's all right. It happens. Okay. So we need uh, da, 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 camshafts I4B. Camshafts I4. Oh, really? Hmm. Okay. They don't have any performance camshafts. That's interesting. That is really interesting that they don't have any for this. Hmm. Well... It's all right. We just won't get that extra power out of the uh, camshaft. Cam gear I4, single overhead cam. There we go. Uh, we're probably going to need 
so we need the water pump too. So water pump uh, I4B. We're going to need some um, rollers. I believe it was two A's we're going to need. Oh, shit. Didn't even buy them. There we go. I believe it was two A's. Yeah, it was. Okay, cool. So we'll try to get the front end sewn up real quick. So that way we can focus on getting the turbo on. We'll get the exhaust manifold and all that stuff on. We've got to get the timing belt or chain on. Assuming it's going to be a belt. Yep, serpentine belt A. And then we'll get serpentine belt B for the I4B. So serpentine belt A, I4B. Serpentine belt B. B, I, 4, B. There we go. Put this on. We're going to need another roller or a belt tensioner, actually. So we'll do that. Belt tensioner. What else are we going to need? We're going to need the timing cover A, which we do not have. Um, let's just do timing since we're working on that part of the engine. Uh, timing cover... Uh, what was it? The timing cover... Yep. Port I4B. There we go. Get this all sewn up. We're still going to need that serpentine belt, but we need the crankshaft pulley. Man, this engine really did not have much on it at all, which is very unfortunate because we are spending a good amount of money to put all this stuff on it, which really sucks. Okay, then we're going to need another roller. I figured we would need another one. Wasn't sure if we were going to need an A or a B. So, there we go. I believe that's it on the front half. Awesome. I'm not going to do the turbo yet. That's like the best part. So, we're going to need a cam gear A for the rear. Uh, cam gear A, I, 4, B. Uh, we're going to need a performance fuel filter. Uh, we need the timing chain. Yep, this is where the timing is at. It's on the rear. Totally forgot about that. Which means we're also going to need probably the sprocket. Um, oh, cam gear B. Cam gear B, I4B. There we go. Then we're going to need some sort of cover for this. Cam gear. Yep. Okay. So timing cover. Timing cover for the where would you right there you go there it is let's go and put it on getting it almost getting it i still got to build the top half of the motor which is fine let's actually just do that now so we're going to need four spark plugs uh camshaft cap i4b let's just buy those right now we're going to need uh before i buy them let's just double check how many we're actually going to need just eight of them Okay, so camshaft cap I4B. Eight of those. Uh, so let's just do performance check real quick. So intake manifold I4B, fuel filter, turbo I4B. Let's just see if we can get these in the performance shop. So turbo I4, they don't have. Wow, that's very surprising. Uh, intake manifold, they do not have. Wow. Okay. And then fuel filter. I'm just going to go ahead and get this because we're going to need that as well. I'm really surprised that they don't have these, uh, these turbos and intake manifolds in the performance shop. That's really shitty. Also, I almost just forgot we do need the spark plugs. Yeah, that sucks. I was really hoping to kind of put a ton of power into this car, but it doesn't look like it's going to go that way because uh, they don't have the, the components that we need to do it. Which is, uh, yeah, that's not great, but it's all right. We'll put as much as we can and just get, squeeze out as little power as we can just from factory and just kind of see where we're at. And I'm pretty sure that this car is going to be pretty pretty ridiculous as it is. I mean, the standard forward focus is pretty ridiculous from factory, and I've seen people modify them and, and build the motors and stuff, and they just, they're just they just freaking insane, which is why I'm very, very tempted to sell my warranty back to Ford and just start modifying the hell out of my RS because, my God, it looks amazing. It looks amazing what you can do to, uh, to some, of these, some of these cars. 
Okay, what are we looking for? Engine head cover I4B. That is what we're looking for. Get this on. Then we're going to need to get a turbocharger because we do not have one. Ignition coils, four ignition coils. And then, yeah, okay. So let's quickly just buy the turbo that we need. Uh, turbo, I believe it's just the turbo. Is it the I4B? I think it is. No, or, no. wait, what is it? Okay, I4B, yeah. I just didn't want to buy the wrong turbo and just be like, well, there you go. You got the wrong one. All right, ignition coils, four of these. I mean, we'll get some extra power. It won't be anything ridiculous, but we'll get some extra power. Intake manifold. I don't, or exhaust manifold. Don't know if they have that, but I can double check. At least we got somewhat of a modification on the engine here. So exhaust manifold... Exhaust manifold I4 turbo is what we're looking for. Nope. I4B is what we're looking for. And it doesn't look like they have it. Man, they really don't want you to, to <laughs> modify the I4B. That's 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 unfortunate. Because if this if this thing had the option of being able to do uh modified turbos and exhaust manifolds, intake manifolds, and all that stuff, like it would be an absolute beast. All right, so intake manifold for the I4B. There we go. Go and slap this on. I'm getting pretty close to finishing up the engine. I don't think there's going to really be much after this. Uh, throttle the V6B. Interesting. Let's just see if, uh, if the performance shop has throttle v6b they do okay well that's nice at least we get somewhat of an option to be able to have that on there how about that how about that oh fuel rail fuel rail i4b i don't know if they're gonna have that in here and they do not okay well <laughs> again really wish they had some of this stuff uh, fuel rail I4B. We're going to need four of them. I almost didn't notice these things. They were really tucked up under here. But at least we did. So that way we didn't drop... Oop, shit. That way we didn't drop the motor in here without the, uh, the fuel rails in. Alright, let's just look around real quick. Double check. Anything look out of the ordinary? Anything look missing? Doesn't appear to be. I think we're good. I think we got the motor done. All right, now's the time. Let's put the car lift or the, uh, the the engine crane by. We'll pull off the engine. We will go ahead and install the engine into the car. Move the crane back and check it out. Nice, looking very nice. I'm a, that's a little concerning fit between the uh, ABS module and the engine head cover, but you know what? Whatever. No biggie. No big deal. It's very nice. In the car. Awesome. So, now that that's done, let's go ahead and go to the tune shop, and we'll go to the gearbox. Clutch pressure plate, ba -ba, all these. We'll go back to this shop, we'll go to the gearbox, and we'll buy a clutch plate. Oh, wait, no. Clutch release bearing is what we need. And then we're also going to have to buy a performance uh, transmission as well. And, um... We will do that once we're ready to put that in the car. We have so many clutches. It's ridiculous. Clutch pressure plate. Very nice and shiny that no one will ever see. It's just like when I did the clutch on my Miata. Like, you buy these parts and they look freaking awesome and cool and shiny and new. And it's just like nobody will ever see that ever again. So, Gearbox i4 4x4. So, let's go ahead and see the custom gear shop if they have that. Gearbox i4 4x4. Are you here? Do you have one? Is that a thing? Gearbox i4 4x4. Boom. I don't know if this actually actually does anything or what the point of this is, but I just spent $1,800 on it, so it better do something. It better be worth it. Uh, let's just double check. We're going to need to put a starter in. I believe that's just a standard starter. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to purchase that now just so we can just do that. That'll be the last thing we have to do mechanically because everything else will be under the car. 
do have a front drive shaft, which is very nice. Front drive axle H. We're going to have to purchase one more, which is fine. Front drive axle H. There we go. Okay. We're getting there. Oh, Jesus. Did not mean to go this far back, but this works. And then drive shaft. Sweet. Very awesome. Very awesome. We'll have to do the exhaust as well. We'll see if the performance shop has the options of doing the exhaust, which I really, I don't know. I don't know anymore. Front exhaust section A, I, 4, B. Something tells me no. That it's not going to have it, but let's just go ahead and see if they do. Front exhaust section I, 4, or front exhaust section A, I, 4, B. What was it? Front exhaust section A, I, 4, B. Yeah, no, they don't have it. Okay, front exhaust section A. Front exhaust section A. I four B. There we go. Go ahead and put this piece on. I know they'll have the mid muffler and the rear muffler in the performance shop. I know that. So rear muffler, bam. Mid muffler, bam. Throw these in real quick. At least we got some nice shiny exhaust parts in the car. There we go. And look at that. The exhaust actually somewhat looks like it works on this one. I think, though, give a quick little look around. I don't think we're missing anything. I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready to drop her down. I think we are pretty much done. Hmm. 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 Don't know about that exhaust pipe placement. We'll we'll see in a second. So here are the new wheels. Um, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan. If they were all black, I really wouldn't mind. I wasn't a huge fan of the stock wheels, so it was kind of like pick your poison between what is good and bad. And these are just they're there, but they were. I was really looking for black wheels. You just I. I yeah, that goes back to what I said in the last episode. Just if we could paint all the wheels black, I would have had a set that looked amazing. And I just, uh, it really sucks not being able to have that. But these look, uh, they look, I mean, they're wheels. So there's that. All right. Well, we're done mechanically. Oh, wait, almost forgot. Oil in the car. Always put oil in your engine. Don't, don't forget to do that. Okay, let's put oil in this thing, and then we'll be completely done mechanically. And the interior is already done. The suspension's done. Wheels are on. Engine's done. Everything else is done. The only thing we need to do is we need to assemble some of the pieces. I'm just going to see. We do have a trunk piece that's already done and assembled. We do have a door, so we don't need to buy that. Front right fender, we do have that. Um... The headlight, I don't think, was repaired. Oh, it was. Okay. Oh. Engine cover. Very nice. That's cool. Everything else was completely missing. So I'm going to have to buy all the glass, these doors, taillights, bumpers. But we could repair some of the pieces, which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purchase those pieces. And then we will uh, slap them on the car. But you can kind of see the progress already. It still looks very shitty and janky. I'm not sure why these pieces are different colored, considering it was a part of the same car, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to purchase those pieces, and then we'll uh, put this car together. Alright, so I went ahead and bought all the pieces that I think we're going to need. I actually bought two front windows here. I don't... Is there actually a difference? I think one of them's just tinted. Let's just pull it off and see what the difference between that one and this one is. Yeah, that one's tinted. Um... I don't mind that one, actually. Let's just do that one. That one works. Put all the door panels on. That way we have all the doors. I did buy the tinted rear glass and all that stuff, just because if they have that option, I'm going to go for it, because I love window tints. I will not ever drive a car without it. I will tint all my windows, and I don't care how illegal it could end up being. It's a law that I just don't agree with, so I break it. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't understand. It makes no sense. Just, like, let me, look at that engine cover. That looks so cool. EcoBoost. Don't, mine does not say EcoBoost on my engine cover. It says Ford Performance. So, there's that. 
Go ahead and throw the tail lights in. We gotta get some license plates too. I almost forgot that. I always almost forget the license plates. All right. There isn't a front end there. Let's put the exhaust on. There you go. That exhaust is correct now. It wasn't correct before. I was a little concerned. Put the front bumper on. Put the left headlight in. Let's go ahead and close that. Go into standard mode and close it. It's getting there. Look how multicolored this thing is. Those wheels are not great. I gotta be honest. I'm not a huge fan of them. Let's just see if there's anything else that we could have missed. Anything else we could have missed. It's looking good and sealed up. We are getting to the end of the road here. Let's go ahead and do the license plates. We're going to do... Uh, let's just do Focus RS. Two of them. Two Florida plates. Um, do I have to put one on the front? I really don't want to put one on the front. I'm just going to put one on the back. I'm going to buy two, but I'm only going to put one on because I don't. This card, with, look how good it looks without a front plate. Why would you need it? Ugh, look at this. It is so multicolored and ugly, but it looks so good at the same time. Man. All right, so now one of the more crucial parts of this build is getting it to the paint shop and finding the correct paint color because mine is the nitrous blue. That's what, that's what the color of my Focus RS is. And that is a big, big thing for me was finding the right color. So let's just try to nail in where the blue actually is. Okay, so it's right. So it's kind of like this. It's a bit of a light color. That's looking kind of close. It's a bit of a light. Oh, that's looking real close. It's not super dark, but it's not crazy bright. It's like a... It's really hard to describe. Let's get it right. See, I like it right about... It's a little yellow. Let's do 205, I think, is where... No, 206. 207. I like 207. It's a little dark. It is, it is kind of a bright color, but it's not... You know what? 80 seems pretty good. Brightness. Honestly, I think this is going to be it. I don't think we can do any liveries. Nope. This, I think this is going to be it. I think this is as close as we can get. All right. Let's take it out in the shop and let's take a look at it. I am I'm probably going to change these wheels. I, I'm not a fan of these wheels. Oh, that color looks so good. That is pretty close. That is pretty close. Look at this thing. Oh, these poles are always in the way. Look at this. Looks so good. I'm really, if those wheels were completely black, I would have no issue with them. That looks so good. That looks really, really good. I'm, I, I think I gotta order, I gotta get new wheels. I just, I really dislike these wheels. I just, there's not many options. There's just, I want black wheels, but like there was these, I was tempted to go with, um, so a good example is, I was trying to find some that resemble mine, these. These are very resemblant of my wheels. They're just not black. Uh, which I might end up going with these. These are okay. I don't think they would look good on the car, though. Oh, man. I just... <sighs> hmm. I don't know. Like, there's not many wheels that just stand out that scream, like, my wheels. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to go with these. I think these are honestly the closest that I'm going to get to a set of wheels that look somewhat like the standard set of Focus wheels. So let's go ahead and put her back up on the lift. We're going to swap the wheels out real quick because uh, I just, th these are just ugly. These are just real ugly. Um, and I'm just, I'm just not digging it at all. I wonder how the exhaust... So the exhaust comes out there. Oh, I see. So the exhaust comes out there, and then it's hidden by the bumper cover, and then you put in that piece. Well, that works. That's actually really nice. I don't mind that. It's better than the Crown Vic. The Crown Vic, I just still can't get over those freaking tips. And I get that there's limitations. I know it's, it's you know, the, the person that makes the mod, like, they make them so nice. It's just, I'm sure if they could have fixed that, then they would have. Uh, it's just, there's, there's obviously got to be limitations to this game and being able to... To, uh, 
get the uh, the exhaust and stuff like that to seat properly with everything else that you're trying to do with like the shapes of the cars. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swap the tires that I just put on those ugly wheels onto the new wheels and we're going to see how it looks. Oh, so much better. So much better. I mean, they're if they were black, they would be almost perfect, but they do look so much better than those other wheels. Man, this car looks so good. The color, I'm very impressed with how close I got to the color. It looks really good. I mean, it's a little bit off, but for the most part, it's it's pretty close. That is pretty close. God, it looks so good. All right, so now all we got to do, let's take it over to the dyno. Cannot start engine. What? Oh, you know why? I am dumb. Let's go ahead and go in here. One thing I forgot. I forgot to put the starter in the car. Oh, man. That's embarrassing. I was like, cannot start engine. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Move car. Dino. Let's do it. Let's dino this thing. I'm really hoping. I don't think we're going to have to put the front plate on. I don't think it, the, it requires it. I would really love. Oh, excuse me. Jesus. I don't know what happened. That's <laughs> just my voice just crapped out. I would really love that they didn't make me do it. So the standard horsepower figures are 337 horsepower, which is honestly almost pretty close to the real. They they advertise it at like 350 horsepower for the real RS, but you know it's those are manufactured numbers, so it's like best case scenario 350. So we're gonna see what the performance parts got us. 460 horsepower, so a 36% gain in horsepower and a 32% gain in torque. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, so the only thing that we need to do now is take this thing out to the racetrack and uh, see what we can do, see how fast we can go, see how it handles, and, and see if we end up crashing it, because I know we will. So let's go to the racetrack. All right, on the track. Accelerate to start. Those windows on front are very, very dark. <laughs> oh, man, this thing is fast. Oh, it's really fast. Let's hope it is actually all-wheel drive, so it corners, too. A bit of understeer. There we go. It powered through. Wasn't bad. It shifts real hard. Ooh, left turn. I'll do one lap on the interior view, then I'll switch. I'm going to see if I can try to do... My ultimate goal has been to do a lap in under a minute. I have not been able to get a car to do that yet. I think there is, there's even an achievement for getting your a lap under a minute, which I have not done. I, I can't find a car to do it. Either that or I'm just not a good enough racer. <laughs> oh, hitting the walls, crashing it. Oh my god. Well, rip. Restoration Garage just destroyed it on the first lap. Brand new Focus RS that we just restored, and it's just like, and dead. And gone. Definitely not getting a minute lap on this one. Let's see what kind of speeds we can hit here. Let's get in the... There we go. Let's get into the look around mode. They really don't require the front plate, which is very nice. Look at this car. It looks so good. The wheels are much better than they were. Oh, God, we weren't at the end. Oh, oh, we're doing 200 kilometers an hour. Oh, okay. Oh, off the track. Really far off the track. Not good at all. Doesn't have the backfires like a real RS, but that's all right. Come on. Let's just... Try to beat our time of a minute eight. I don't think we're gonna with how much we went off the track. But then again, we did spin. You're only eight seconds behind from getting a minute. That's actually not too bad. I wonder if we can actually do this. We might be able to do it. I don't know. Let's try not to wreck this time coming through the chicane. Break. Hard turn. Long sweep and left. That was a good corner. Apexed it very nice. Long sweep and right. Oh, we might be able to do it under a minute in this car. I think we might be able to do it. I'm going to try to give it one more lap. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see how far behind we are on this one, and we'll see how much we have to shave off. Okay, two seconds. We got to shave off two seconds. No, into the grass again. Oh, we're not going to get it. We're not going to get it. Nope, not getting it. Let's just come to a stop. Damn. We'll find a car to do it. I think this is the car if I can find the right... You know, I, I gotta figure out something. To, I can't drive on a keyboard and mouse. It's just, it's real bad. God, look how good this car looks. Man. That is amazing. This is such a good mod. Oh, God. Alright, let's return to the shop.
All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Car Mechanic Simulator. Thank you, everybody, for watching and liking. And if you would like to see this series continue, remember to hit the like button. It's the easiest way to let me know you want to see more. In the next episode, I am going to be restoring this N.A. Miata. And uh, we'll see what we can do with this. We'll probably try to put some power down in it if we can. It is in some desperate need of TLC. And in the spare time, I'm going to probably pick up the Pagani DLC. So maybe we can get the speed track. And then maybe we can just do an episode where we take all the cars that we've restored out there and see which one's the fastest. Maybe take the RS back to the racetrack and try to beat under a minute. And uh, I will also be looking for some more mods to be able to start adding some more vehicles to the list. So I really appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.